Hey there guys and gals, welcome again, this is Thrice. You are joining me for another North American Sustainable Farms podcast episode. Today we are going to be talking about three tips for happy chickens. You gotta love them chickens, you want to make them happy. That's if you, you want happy chickens, because uh, I mean, if you don't want happy chickens, then you're just going to watch a bunch of dinosaurs be angry all the time, attacking each other and, and freaking out every time you throw them food. It's just not cool, man. It looks crazy. And then they attack you. Like, especially if you got little kids and you got a rooster and you don't raise them to be right. They just, they get angry, man. And they'll, they'll kick your kids and be all vicious. I've seen it. I have seen it. So anyways, we want happy chickens, everybody. And, and plus, it's fun. It's really cool to watch chickens. If you haven't ever had any kind of poultry, uh, birds in general, when you provide a really good environment for them, they're pretty cool to watch. Some of them can have attitudes, but generally, when you take care of your birds, they're pretty fun, and they love engaging with you and interacting with you. So, it's pretty interesting. It's it's a fascinating thing to get into, and if you haven't gotten into chickens yet, or, you know, any kind of poultry, and you're looking to get into that, maybe you came across this, um, and you already have some birds, and you're just looking for some extra tips, this is really three tips for happy chickens that I feel is super important and I try to utilize all the time, um, and it's, I think that everybody should really, you know, take the opportunity to look more into these things, and, uh, really, <clears throat> you know, uh, make sure they're always there for your birds. So, first thing, you know, off the bat, fresh water. Now, fresh water not only means every day making sure that they have clean drinking water, it also means that, uh, using the water as a form of medicine is super important. So, of course, fresh water means fresh water, clean water. But when I say fresh water, you know, I like to also explain that in water, I do put DE every now and then, apple cider vinegar every now and then. Um, you know, you can put uh, some citrus peels every now and then. That, that does help with some parasitic things. It depends on what kind of birds you have. I'll be doing an episode later on about, you know, how little you can give as far as things like citrus peels or essential oils inside of water and what they're used to treat, what they can help. So there's things like that you can do. Again, these are more like extraction things. They're not, you don't give them the, the citrus peel direct to eat and you don't want to do that every day. Um, onions are another thing. Garlic's another thing. So these are things that some people say, oh, don't give that to your chickens. It's like, okay, you don't give it to them all the time. You don't give it to them regularly. It's one of those things that can just help every now and then as far as boosting immune system, regulating good and bad bacteria in the gut. And and again, these are things we're still learning as a society when it comes to um, how even chickens operate. Like, it's pretty fascinating how many people don't know that chickens actually consume, um, you know, microscopic creatures or even just small creatures that we really can't see they they see actually a a, a lot more uh, they see smaller things than we do put it that way like when we see a bunch of bugs there's more bugs there usually and you gotta get down with a microscope and you're like oh look at all these little bugs well they're already down there with the microscope going yep here we go and they actually have two different eyes um, one that sees kind of a, a closer distance and the other one that sees a farther distance away so um, I really don't know personally if that farther distance away actually gives them a chance to utilize that eye for kind of like a enhanced vision, like a, a microscope almost. I'd be really curious to look more into that, but I do know when watching my birds, they do rotate their eyes and to get a better look. So I'm very kind of like, it's kind of like a hypothesis <laughs> because of what I've observed, but um, working on actually kind of implementing it as a theory and, and seeing who else may concur with my conclusions and other farmers out there that we can maybe figure something out if it's a possibility that they're actually seeing better with the, the distance, the long distance eye. Anyways, we'll get more on that in the future and get back to these tips. So fresh water is really important. Utilizing the water then to give kind of extracts for medicinal purposes is also very important and also to make sure it's fresh water when doing that is important. So that's the first tip. The second tip is bugs. Bugs are super awesome everybody and they're everywhere. So if you have issues with bugs in your garden or issues with bugs on your house, like say it's it's May or June, you've got May or June beetles, you can put buckets of water outside to collect them. There's bug traps for the garden and when you get those bugs not using any kind of toxic, you know, collection method. You get those bugs, you can then feed those to your birds. 
these bugs are nutrient dense and when they're alive super fun for the birds the birds go crazy actually if you want to see uh, chickens have a blast get a little mouse or a little lizard and they will go nuts they they are predators everybody i know a lot of people don't like to think that about your chickens but chickens are omnivorous predators they will go for moving objects first it is kind of like that whole jurassic park scene don't move he can't see you chickens can see you but when you move you like trigger this instinct inside of them even as like a larger animal you trigger this predator prey relationship to chickens where they're like ah run but when you're a small thing i mean i've seen chickens look at a medium you know okay let's see to, to the chicken i'd say it was about like the size of its leg like a rodent and look at it and go can i eat that you know <laughs> or a, a piece of meat like a carcass you know, cut up part of a snake. I've had to cut a snake in half or in quarters. And then once it's down to a good enough size and it's not a long snake, they're just like, go to town and rip it apart. And they just devour the insides of the snake. So <laughs> chickens love meat. They are very much predators. And uh, they definitely have a very interesting flight or fight response. So it's fun. They're, they're so much fun when it comes to feeding them bugs. Um, and you can feed them other meats and um, protein nutri protein sources. So that's kind of what I was just talking about. Uh, so besides that, it's just awesome. It, it, it is really nutrient dense and awesome for the birds. Bugs, bugs. That's it. <laughs> the third one. Um, oh, I guess the last note. I do have notes here for this. The last note I did have, I was trying to see. It's a great way to handle waste. Bugs, if you didn't know, you can have specific bugs like black soldier flies and earthworms, and they will decompose things for you. So that's another topic for another day, but that is a huge thing that's a benefit of using bugs, is when you start to produce your own bugs by doing composting methods, you're kind of killing two birds with one... Killing two sustainable birds with one... Wait. Killing two birds with one sustainable stone. There we go. <laughs> Alright, the third thing here is going to be compost. Feeding your chickens compost as far as, you know, food scraps from your yard, um, or, yeah, food scraps from your yard, food scraps from your kitchen or garden, yard waste, um, I mean, there, compost can be so many different things. You don't want to do anything like human manure, or like anything from a composting toilet, um, but you can use animal manure. This is something a lot of people don't know about. Animal manure can make up to 80% of a compost feed system that you use for chickens. Not for ducks, not for other poultry, just for chickens. I think maybe turkeys can eat off compost feed systems. Um, I have never seen anything practiced with that. And a lot of people are probably going, what the hell is a compost feed system? That's something we're really going to get into on this podcast a lot. I'm, that's something I'm going to be implementing for our farm stuff, with the poultry stuff. I already do implement, and I've been practicing working on different things, really learning about compost and soil decomposition um, from a more hands-on approach instead of just watching a bunch of videos and only reading the, the you know different papers and documents on what people have discovered. But compost is just such a wonderful thing, and it, and it is a variety of things. But generally, I'm talking about, like, food waste, yard waste. Um, if you have any kind of animal waste, like I said, manure waste from livestock, it can be utilized with that. So what this does is it does provide extra nutrients to the chickens. You're getting, if you include most of the food waste that you have in your own kitchen and you eat a variety diet, then you're going to be giving all that extra variety to your chickens, the extra nutrients, extra minerals. Um, and another great way to make sure they get all that is with your extra vegetable scraps and, and food scraps, you can always break it down with a food processor, break it down with a blender, and then when doing that, you're also getting a lot of liquid out of it. You can combine like DE or flour with that liquid. Um, I don't recommend gluten flours for chickens. Um, there's a big controversy on the gluten nowadays, but anything that's non-gluten and even, you know, gluten-based flours, you can, can really do whatever you want, depending on what you want to do. And uh, it, it just, it's so great. They love it. They love the variety. It's another way to kind of compete against having to pay for pellets. You know, you can get a, a different kinds of wild bird seed varieties, uh, you know, black, uh, black sunflower seed. You can get all sorts of, of actual plant products and then do food scraps with a kind of grain flour, um, and that will actually completely change your feed costs from store-bought pellets to a homemade product. And this is a real way to do it, especially if you have bugs. This all covers your feed expenses 
or it all covers the feed necessity for the animals as far as what they need day per day. It is work, it does take time, but doing this really does create healthy, happy chickens. And that that multitude of, or multitude, the variety of food that you're providing at that point actually really helps their microbiome. And that's a big thing that we don't realize nowadays. Is one thing that we're supposed to do, and a lot of animals do, is they eat one thing at a time, and so their body actually has time to process that generally, and then they move on to the, another thing, and because they're always foraging. And the other thing is that we, you know, animals are supposed to eat a variety in general, um, or if they're only eating one specific thing, it's related to that area. So the microbiome is adapted to that. And uh, right now, we kind of live in a really weird way where pellets, you know, giving to animals, I mean, what kind of microbiome is that really creating? What what are they really, what kind of variety are they really getting inside of those pellets? Or, or are they even getting a variety of microbiome? So, in the same thing with us, when we eat all these cereals, grains, you know, breads, and just these basic foods, so what kind of variety are we getting in our microbiome? So... That's kind of another thing that I kind of lean towards what helps with happy chickens is when you're balancing that microbiome, it really makes them just so much happier and uh, healthier again. So the last thing I'm going to say about doing the compost systems is it makes your chickens work. You can produce beautiful soil with it. And if you set it up right, and there's tons of YouTube videos, we're going to have videos on it as well as podcast episodes specifically on this where you can put your chickens to work tilling the compost and and the and you can mix you know soil that you have on the ground if you have really clay soil or soil that's filled with clay you can mix that in with manure and and plant matter and food waste and let the chickens go to town you don't have to till it the chickens will do it you you can set it up inside of a um, you know a frame or a mesh wrap and then break it open for the chickens and then put it all back up and shovel it in and I mean, you can really go to work yourself with the chickens and and have a team effort where where you're just building soil, and that soil will be built within months because the chickens are just amazing little tillers. And then with you piling it back up, you're creating that weight. So there's all the science that goes into building soil when it comes to utilizing chickens and doing it the natural ways, and it's just, it's so cool, guys. And, And the fact that you can be, you know, alchemists in your backyard creating black gold utilizing these beautiful creatures that are ancient dinosaurs it to me like it's almost spiritually metaphorical (laughs) for life and how much we are just caretakers of this planet so that's pretty much it guys um again this was a podcast for north american sustainable farms this is going to be some of the stuff you can expect is tips on chickens tips on bugs composting uh, mushrooms we got some gardening stuff we're, we're getting going and we're actually working on a campaign a funding campaign for doing these indoor farming projects as well as art, outdoor farming projects in areas that we will be utilizing old retail spaces that you're either going to be torn down or just sitting going to waste i mean we want to involve community and do so much things with this farming stuff that we're trying to do and this is in multiple states right now it's just really at the beginning phases guys so i'm super excited And I want to keep sharing tips like this, keep letting you know the information going on um, in the world that's coming out with as far as how we can really create healthier, happier, and better food for all of society. So thank you all again for joining. This is Thrice with North American Sustainable Farms. And remember, guys, let's keep growing together.